Where are all the grouse at? That's a good question. That's a question that I'm definitely constantly asking myself, figuring out where are we going next? What type of cover am I looking for? What's the weather like today? What's the food that's available? Where are we going to find that next bird? And what exactly is it that I'm looking for to find that bird in? And grouse hunting, that plays a really big part in all of it, is exactly what am I looking for at that point in time to find that next bird? So in this video, I'm going to try and go into a little bit deeper of what I'm looking for in each of the spots that I'm going into hunt and how it plays out, whether it's the dog that I'm running, the type of cover that's in there, the weather, the time of year, all those things factor into how we're approaching our next spot or what it is that we're looking for to go in and find our next bird or go in and have a successful hunt. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in this video. I hunted the Halloween weekend here on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, had a couple spots that were slow and also had some spots that turned out to be really, really good. Had some good dog work in those spots. Um, and one of them I had some pretty poor shooting in it. That'll be towards, we'll show that towards the end of the video. That was Sunday evening. We got into a good pile of birds in there and my shooting just, my shooting wasn't on target that afternoon. So we got that video to play through here and I'm going to try and just talk a little bit more about what it is I'm looking for going into each spot, the dog that I'm going to run, why I'm running that dog, and just try and give a brief explanation of the whole overall story, what I'm looking for and how I'm going to hunt that spot on that particular day. I hunted a few different spots across the state that weekend the weather was a little bit different especially on friday it rained most of the day so that always factors into what exactly it is i'm looking for so we're going to get into all that on this video um, i hope you guys enjoy it and thanks for following along it's friday morning and we wake up to rain everything's completely soaked it rained most of the night so my mind immediately turns towards something with a pretty good amount of pines in it for good cover from the rain where the birds can stay dry. So there's this spot here. It's a pretty small cut, but it's surrounded by a lot of fairly good size white pine trees, as you can see here. And my thought was this is going to give a lot of good cover for the birds during the rain here. So I've got my young dog Aspen on the ground. She's a year old at this point. I'm taking her in here because it's a small spot. I'm not looking for a bunch of birds, but if we can come across a bird, that's perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So we're hoping to come out of this spot with at least finding a bird for the dog. She's on point right there, Dad. Just walk right up to her. So we go into the cut and I kind of get drawn off path a little bit here from where I wanted to go. Aspen ends up going into the cut and on point right away. And I wanted to keep working down those pines just a little bit more down that edge, try and stay and stick with those pines. But we get sucked in here, Aspen goes on point and we walk up to her. So as we're approaching, I can already tell that there's probably not going to be a bird right here in front of us. Just the way that the dog is kind of acting, the cover we're in. If there was going to be a bird here, it was going to take off by now. So instead of woeing Aspen, I just let her relocate on her own here. Just because I'm already figuring there's not a bird here, so it's a low risk situation and I want her to be free thinking and move up on her own if she senses that there's not a bird there. Come up, come up. So she works up and she ends up going back on point again. Pretty similar situation as we were just in. Walk up to her. I can tell she's she's got some good intensity. She's kind of looking at the ground, so my mind is kind of thinking maybe there's a woodcock in front of her here, or she's just smelling some old scent that's directly in front of her. Aspen. 
So I release her, she sniffs up a little bit more, does a few circles around us, and that was really it. We never found a bird up in this area. Like I said, I kind of got off track here a little bit, but we made it to the back of the cut, and this is where I want to end up at, and the dog goes on point right away. Walk up right there, straight in line. You see the dog? Yes. I'm going to circle out to the right a little bit. You can see there's all these young white pines mixed around. There's a few more mature ones in this area too, but just good cover for these birds to be hiding out in the rain. So Aspen's on point and we walk up and the woodcock gets up. I take a shot, I thought I hit it, I seen two more get shoot up it. in front and I was waiting for my dad to shoot, but he actually couldn't get a shot because they flew in front of a tree for him. There's three of them. Yeah, I shot one here and two of them got up right there in front of you. One went high, one went low. I saw the one that went low here, and that tree was, boom, right in my sight, and I couldn't uh -huh. see the rest of that. As I pulled up, I uh -huh. saw the flash of it. Yeah. So yep, so you got to be constantly looking what's in front of you. You know, you, if you, there's something in front of you that you can't, can't shoot around, you got to get around it. And you got to do it fast. So at this point, I was pretty fairly certain that I had dead hit bird. that bird and it was down. So I take the dog Come over, on, we bird. start looking for it. She gets a little birdie in there and we searched for a good five minutes or more. Did a pretty good sweep around the area and we never found it. Dead bird. Dead bird, fetch. So I'm not certain if I ended up missing this bird or just maybe the fact that I had a young dog on the ground or it was just so fresh after I shot it and she struggled with scenting conditions here that we didn't find it or what happened, but we ended up coming out of there without the bird. You see the dog there? Okay, let's, let's work to the right side of her and kind of try and get out in front a little bit. So Aspen goes back on point here again and I'm trying to get my dad and I to cut out in front of the dog here a little bit because she's got her nose up in the air a little bit. She's standing tall, and I'm thinking, man, there might be a grouse out in front of her a little bit. If she's picking up scent from this distance and has a little bit more intensity and style to her, there could be a grouse out there. Keep moving up. Aspen. So nothing ends up coming of this, and I release Aspen. She runs up, she does a few laps around us, and I actually walked back to where she came from, and I ended up running into a woodcock that was probably 20 yards behind from where she was pointing here. You ready? Yeti. We're off to the next spot and the rain is kind of quit now. I'm going into a spot where I'm thinking birds might be in to feed or they're just looking for some midday cover to loaf around in. And this is a spot that doesn't have any aspen in it. It's not a clear cut, but it's a bunch of shrub oak and a lot of apple thickets that run throughout this. As you can see right here, there's a bunch of apple trees that I'm walking through. You see them? And yet he ends up going on He's point right away somewhere. in one of these apple thickets. And as we're walking up, the bird ends up getting up in front of us a little ways while we were approaching. And he stayed on Be point, ready. so we keep working up to him. Okay, I see him. I was working on my lumberjack skills on that first shot.
Yeti, okay. Okay, okay, dead bird. Good boy, bring, heal. Good, give, good boy. Oh, woodcock. So like I said, this spot, it's not aspen, but it's all about stem density. There's a lot of shrubs in here. There's a lot of overhead cover still. A lot of these oak leaves will stay on the trees until later in the year when nothing else currently has leaves on it. So that's what I'm looking for in cover in here is the birds have still a little bit more cover in here compared to what's in the surrounding areas and the open hardwoods around this spot. Yeti's back on point here on the left. Swing and a miss. Go ahead and walk into him. Again, Yeti's on point here, and I'm trying to get my dad to walk in on the dog and flush the bird. And he was having a hard time finding the dog in the cover here. I was kind of circling around, seeing if I could push the bird out back to him, and it ends up getting up, and he never saw it. see it oh my gosh moving on now I've got ember out and I guess one thing no. I'll point out here real quick is you might notice whenever I start out on a hunt with my dogs I no. start them in the heel position and send them in a direction and I do that just because I think it makes a nice start Ember. to the hunt where you're telling the dog we're working together. It's not you running out there and going to find something. It's us working together as a team. And it also gives me an opportunity to send the dog in the direction that I want it to go from the start. So Saturday morning, conditions are a little bit nicer now. The weather's turned around, it's dry, the sun's out, and I've got Ember out. I ended up shooting a bird on this walk on the back side of this cut, and Ember didn't get a good line on it where it went down. So instead of her just Whoa. running around, spending Whoa. a few minutes trying to find the bird on her own, I brought her over, I lined hey, her up, and I sent her on a back. back command. And this was something we've been working on this summer. And it was nice to put it to use in the field, and it turned out pretty cool. Dead bird, fetch. Fetch here. Fetch. Good. Good dog. Good girl. Fetch here. This was actually the Dog. only bird we encountered yeah. on this walk, and I was a little bit surprised. This was a pretty prime aged cut, but the Good. thing was the year before it had Good. a beaver pond on the back side of it, and yeah. it offered a lot Good of girl. growth back there and a lot of diversity on that creek and that swamp where it grew. But somebody must have came in there and trapped all the beavers and blew up the dam because all that was gone, and it was just a really small stream that ran through. All the alders were dried out, and... I don't know what it was, if it was just that day, but this was just the only bird we found in there on that walk. You ready to do this? You ready? Yeti. Okay. Last walk of the day. It's now the golden hour. We're in the final few hours of daylight here, and we're hoping for a good walk. I'm going into a spot that's a pretty good-sized cut in the back of the middle of some hardwoods and it has beach in it and all the leaves right now are dead and gone all the vegetation's dead as you can see everything's brown and no leaves are left on the trees in this area except for this beach and this cut has a lot of beach in it and it has kind of thicket to thicket of all this beech wood in it and beech wood carries its leaves for a long time after everything else dies and falls off so I'm going in here to this cut, hoping to find some birds on around the edge of it stacked up in these beach sections. We get to the first one here, and the dog goes in it and gets birdie, and I start trailing him. But as you can see going through here, all these leaves left on the tree, it gives a lot of cover if there's birds in this area to flock to. So we worked through this section of beach and the dog's birdie the whole time and we ended up not putting a bird up out of directly in this 
but we swung out to the edge and he goes on point right in front of me about 30 to 40 yards and he turns and cocks his head back towards me and right then and there I knew there was a bird in between us. Good boy, dead bird. Dead bird. Dead bird, good boy. Dead bird, bring. Good boy. Good boy, dead bird. Good boy. Heal. No. Good. Give. Good boy. Thank you, Yeti. Man, that was... <laughs> We've been working this cut for a long time. And the, he went on point down in here on the edge, just below these uh, pines at the bottom of this hill. And I saw him kind of have his head turned back to me and he was real serious about it. And I took a few more steps up and man, he was still a little ways in front of me, probably 30 yards and the birds got up and they circled back and hooked my way. And I made, here, there goes another bird. And I made a Hail Mary shot on this. I don't. I just caught a flash of it going through and got out in front of it and pulled the trigger. And the bird dumped. So, good work, dog. Man, I'll, I'll take it. This has been, this has been a frustrating run. The dog's been running really hard. And he finally locked a couple down. Um, he's back on point, though, right now. Let's go see if that, he just did a stop to flush there. Or if there's actually another bird. So as I'm blabbing to myself there, Yeti puts another bird up running through the edge of the cut where all those birds just got up at, and he stopped to flush. And I've done some drills with him over the years of stop to flush, and this is why I like those drills for situations like this where the dog maybe puts a bird up, doesn't realize it, but it sees the bird and it stops. So I walk into him on point after he did that stop to flush, and there was a second bird there, and I ended up getting a shot at it. Good boy, dead bird. That a boy, good boy, Yeti. Good boy, dead bird. Dead bird. Good, good boy, Yeti. Bring that a boy. That's my guy. Heal. Let's go, buddy. Good boy. Come on. Good boy. That's a boy. Good boy. Give. Good work, buddy. Good work. That makes a rough day of hunting. I mean, it hasn't been a rough day. It's been a good day of day of hunting. My dad and I got out earlier. We shot a couple birds. Now I just put two in the bag right now, but I just have not been seeing birds today. And then, bam. This was cool. This was fun. Good work, Yeti. So we work up a little bit farther and we run into another section of beach and Yeti goes into it and he goes on point. And he starts moving up just a little bit so I'm already starting to think that this bird is on the run out in front of us. That one was running on us, and I heard it running up there, and I knew it was going to get up a little bit in front of us, and it got up in all this thick stuff here, but holy crap, talk about a pile of birds. That ended up being a pretty good ending to the day. Good work, Yeti. Come here, buddy. That's a good boy. Did you have fun? Did you have a good time? Oh. 
Another aspect that I'm always thinking about when grouse hunting is the soil that comes into play into where I'm going to hunt that day and what I'm looking for exactly. There's sandier soils and then there's darker soils and the sandier soils are a little bit drier they're a little bit higher ground compared to the darker soils which are lower ground and have some more moisture in the soil and there's birds to be found in both but what you're looking for is a little bit different from one to the other they have just a little bit different cover to them one is maybe a little bit more denser with inside the cover and the other ones maybe a little sparser inside the the cover so you would say sandy is a little bit sparser in the cover generally speaking and then darker soil is a little bit thicker inside the cover there's some different things that grow up in each and I had an interesting conversation about what we're looking for in different soil types with Nick Larson of the bird shot podcast so if you're interested on hearing that conversation go ahead and go over to the bird shot and give it a listen It's Sunday now, and I'm going into a spot with Ember where I'm not starting at where I want to end up. We're kind of starting a little ways from there. We're going to go down through a creek and move up through some hardwoods. And this is first thing in the morning. I want to get to this cut here, as you can see on this trail. And you have the cut, and then next to it is some open hardwoods. But in those hardwoods, there's a lot of apple thickets mixed in there. So I'm going to flash to a couple scenes here from the last few weeks when I've hunted this. And as you'll see, it's really, really thick. It's dense in there. And if there's birds that are just kind of loafing out throughout the day, I'll find them in here. But we went in and we started here at the morning. And ideally, I probably should have started right on this trail where the cut ran next to the hardwoods because that's where we found our bird at. So the bird got up in a position where I didn't even see it flush. I just heard Amber. it, and I wasn't able to even think about getting a shot. <laughs> Moving on to the next spot, I've got Aspen out, and I'm going into an area with a bunch of oak in it. And my thought for coming here is all these small oak trees are still holding leaves and I can kind of relate that to where I was on Saturday tonight with all those beach that were still holding leaves and we worked here. the cut and then we ended up going across the road into all this oak and we moved a handful Back of here. birds in here and this come was on, the on. first girl, one come on, come Aspen on. kind of worked down these pines that were there Back and here. she went on point got birdie and a bird ended Back up getting here. up behind us I didn't have the Back camera here. running at that time it just happened Good. fast Good. and I was just Good. only able to get the retrieve Good girl the dog Good dog Good girl but this is where I found the birds at in this spot. We probably moved a half dozen birds in here. Uh, a lot of them I couldn't see or didn't even get a chance to see. She, she, you know, she's a young dog. She blew a lot of them. And that's where those birds were. were hanging out in Aspen that oak here. leaf cover. I wanted to give Ember another chance after her last run ended. So I take her to a spot here where the cut's a little bit older. It's a little more spaced out. It's not as dense inside of it, but on the back, there's a lot of oaks. And last year, those oaks had a lot of acorns on the ground. So I'm going in here hoping that the oaks are in again. And we ended up going back there and finding a bunch of oaks. And we just came off the back side of it and she goes on point. So I get out in front of her, release her, and she trails around in front of me, gets a good sniff of what's going on in the area, and circles Amber. back behind us and puts the birds up.
And this was really a Hail Mary shot. That bird was out there a long ways. It was crossing in front of me, but we still followed up on the shot. And this is why I try and give at least most of these chances a fair opportunity to follow up on because sometimes you just never know. Ember goes on point after we worked up in that direction a few hundred yards and I get up there and there's the dead bird laying right there on the ground and I caught one BB right on the side of the jugular and that's what took the bird down. Ember. Dead bird. Fat cheer. Fat cheer. Good girl, fat cheer. Good. Good girl, fat cheer. Come on. Good dog. Good dog. Good girl. Good dog. Good. Give. Thank you. Good job, girl. It's the final run of our weekend here, and I'm going into a really, really big section where it's just 250 acres of aspen. And it's a 10-year-old cut. It's growing back different throughout the areas of this cut. You kind of have some higher soil up top and some lower soil down below. And it makes a nice mix of covers throughout this whole entire cut. And it holds a pretty fair amount of birds just because of the fact that it's one big continuous piece of aspen and there's a lot of diversity throughout the aspen. On the bottom, there's a bog, and up top, it's open hardwood, so the birds really don't have anywhere else to be except in this cut. And I've got Yeti on the ground because he's a big running dog. There's a lot of area here, so I want to maximize our time on the ground with him covering as much ground as he possibly can in this big cut that we're going into. Oh man, I wish I could have this one back every time I watch it. This bird gets up right in front of me, swoops up oh, are you right down me? the dirt bike track, and oh, I missed. Oh crap, man. Talk about having a look at a freaking grouse. And this was the start of a stretch of shooting just like this. i have been shooting fairly well, and then we get to this point, and everything goes downhill, and I got inside my head, had some good dog work, but I just couldn't connect on any of these shots. Same thing here again, the dog's out on point in front of me, and you can see the ground cover's a little bit different here than where I just was. And this is what I'm talking about in this cut, that it kind of changes from place to place as you move throughout this, because it's so big and it just has a lot of different cover in it. And that's miss number two. Yeti's on point now up on the left hand side of the screen. He's standing just on the outside of this opening besides this pine tree. Are you kidding me? Another good look at a bird, and all I did was take a few limbs out on the way. Are you kidding me? Gosh darn it. Yeti trailed a bird up this ridge, and same situation we've kind of been in the last couple times, where we get to an opening and there's been a bird. So he's on point on this opening, and at this point I'm kind of starting to think, yeah, there's probably a bird here. Again. Man, we trailed this bird and worked it for a minute too, and he pinched it right in the opening here. Holy crap.
but we end up getting an opportunity on a second bird that was there. Dead bird. Dead bird. All right. We'll take that one. Dead bird. Dead bird. Good boy. Good. Heal. No. Good. Good. Give. Oh, man. There was the second one. That was a rough stretch of shooting there. Man, I had such a good look at that first bird, too. Man. So we're working our way back to the truck and yet he goes back on point again and at this point in time we were just walking out of there and i had missed a few birds and i just wasn't expecting to see anything else again at this point Are you kidding me? And the trend continues of the shooting. We get some good dog work, but some pretty crappy shooting again, and I just wasn't able to connect on this nice pair of birds oh, that got man. up in front of us. Shortly after that last miss, Yeti starts working something again. And we get up there and he trails and trails and trails. Goes on point a few times. I let him work out in front of me. And eventually he goes on point and I work my way up to him and the birds just kind of got out just a little ways in front of us. There goes the bird. Bird just got up right over there. Dang it. Oh, there goes another one. There goes another one. Dang it. Three of them just got up here. Didn't get a shot at any of them. So that's it for the weekend. That's it for October. Uh, had a good run on the last year. Saw a lot of birds, missed even more birds, uh, but that's how it goes sometimes. We were getting good looks and good shots on birds, but those are the ones that I struggle with for some reason sometimes. But overall, that's it, and we'll be back again soon.